This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Came several days. Meantime, news came to town of a most horrible murder committed on a fugitive slave named James. Charity, the mother of this unfortunate young man, had been an old acquaintance of ours. I have told the shocking particulars of his death in my description of some of the neighbor and slaveholders. My grandmother, always nervously sensitive about runaways, was terribly frightened. She felt sure that a similar fate awaited me if I did not desist from my enterprise. She sobbed and groaned and entreated me not to go. Her excessive fear was somewhat contagious, and my heart was not proof against her extreme agony. I was grievously disappointed, but I promised to relinquish my project. When my friend Peter was apprised of this, he was both disappointed and vexed. He said that judging from our past experience, it would be a long time before I had such another chance to throw away. I told him it need not be thrown away, that I had a friend concealed nearby who would be glad enough to take the place that had been provided for me. I told him about poor Fanny and the kind-hearted noble fellow who never turned his back upon anybody in distress, white or black, expressed his readiness to help her. Aggie was much surprised when she found that we knew her secret. She rejoiced to hear of such a chance for Fanny, and arrangements were made for her to go on board the vessel the next night. They both supposed that I had long been at the north, therefore my name was not mentioned in the transaction. Fanny was carried on board at the appointed time and stowed away in a very small cabin. This accommodation had been purchased at a price that would pay for a voyage to England. But when one proposes to go to fine old England, they stop to calculate whether they can afford the cost of the pleasure. While in making a bargain to escape from slavery, the trembling victim is ready to say, Take all I have, only don't betray me. The next morning I peeped through my loophole and saw that it was dark and cloudy. At night I received news that the wind was ahead, and the vessel had not sailed. I was exceedingly anxious about Fanny, and Peter too, who was running a tremendous risk at my instigation. Next day the wind and weather remained the same. Poor Fanny had been half dead with fright when they carried her on board, and I could readily imagine how she must be suffering now. Grandmother came often to my den to say how thankful she was I did not go. On the third morning she rapped for me to come down to the storeroom. The poor old sufferer was breaking down under her weight of trouble. She was easily flurried now. I found her in a nervous, excited state, but I was not aware that she had forgotten to lock the door behind her, as usual. She was exceedingly worried about the detention of the vessel. She was afraid all would be discovered and then Fanny and Peter and I would all be tortured to death, and Philip would be utterly ruined, and her house would be torn down. Poor Peter! If he should die such a horrible death as the poor slave James had lately done, and all for his kindness in trying to help me, how dreadful it would be for us all! Alas, the thought was familiar to me, and had sent many a sharp pang through my heart. I tried to suppress my own anxiety and speak soothingly to her. She brought in some allusion to Aunt Nancy, the dear daughter she had recently buried, and then she lost all control of herself. As she stood there, trembling and sobbing, a voice from the piazza called out, Where is John Martha? Grandmother was startled, and in her agitation opened the door without thinking of me. In stepped Jenny, the mischievous housemaid who had tried to enter my room when I was concealed in the house of my white benefactress. I's been hunting everywhere for you, Aunt Martha, said she. My missus wants you to send her some crackers. I had slunk down behind the barrel, which entirely screened me, but I imagined that Jenny was looking directly at the spot, and my heart beat violently. My grandmother immediately thought what she had done and went out quickly with Jenny to count the crackers, locking the door after her. She returned to me in a few minutes, the perfect picture of despair. Poor child, she exclaimed. My carelessness has ruined you. The boat ain't gone yet. Get ready immediately and go with Fanny. I ain't got another word to say against it now, but there's no telling what may happen this day. 
Uncle Philip was sent for, and he agreed with his mother in thinking that Jenny would inform Dr. Flint in less than twenty-four hours. He advised getting me on board the boat, if possible. If not, I...